question a little bit. Man, it seems like every like you know big deer I've been or mature mature deer I've been on, it's like you can almost bet on him being in this area year after year, kind of all year round. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think, like you said, I think some of the three year olds and stuff kind of wander around. But um, yeah, those old you you know too like like when you look at like the um, the swamp. I mean, what I noticed mm-hmm. was like there's I might know about a hundred bedding areas maybe 40 or 50 of them in this swamp are good buck bedding areas that hold, you know, like one and two year old bucks all the time, maybe a mm-hmm. three year old here and there, but you can almost on your two hands count the ones that consistently hold big bucks. It's mm-hmm. like they own the best spots. The young ones just can scatter. There's only so many spots that, that have the ingredients for a mature buck. And I think, They'll find some spot that just doesn't get bothered. That's got everything they need, and they'll just own it. I've yeah. seen where you can't even kick them out of a bed in there. You walk in there, they run out, and if you wait long enough, they'll come walking back in to see if you're still there. Yeah, um, they almost get easier to hunt when they get older because they just they get in that routine of yeah only certain spots will they bed. You mentioned um, in his question or whatever the guy the um, Andy asked that you'll see them like be in different areas based on food. Do you think that's still true with whenever you get to be a five or six year old, or you think they like to be where they're, they're comfortable and they bed there and that's their home and they'll just walk to wherever they need to. Well, when I answer those questions, I'm always referring to big bucks because that's all yeah. I think of, you know, I don't yeah, yeah. consider the other ones, but you know, I can think of, um, I mean, you've done the workshop where we go out to that really remote Island with me, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I watched a buck get up at that island and walk away from that island that you, you know where that island is mm, and walk yeah. all the way around that lake back to the other side to go to crops. And you watch him get out of his bed at dark and go, and you think, holy crap, by the time that thing pokes out in the fields on the other side, it's going to be two hours after dark. You, you know, and he, all through solid cattails when he could bed over by that food. But he's got secure bedding there, right? Right. You'll get another buck that's a mature buck that will bed on the edge of that crop field over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they just got personalities. They got ways about them. But in general, like you're alluding to with what you've seen and I've kind of seen, is more often than not, mature bucks start getting tighter, start staying in smaller home areas, and they generally seem to be more home bodies. But even the um, older bucks, when you get up to the five, six-year-old bucks, when you get into the North Country, they still migrate. But no, look at that buck that I shot last year, that that mm-hmm. old, old, old giant mutant, right? That that buck was a an old buck. I've been watching that buck with a big rack for four or five years. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what the tooth comes back with for age. Because that deer has been in that same spot forever. This is the perfect spot. You just couldn't kill them. I yeah. found a little weak chink in there, and it took me two seasons of only hunting it once a season. So the second time I'm in there of killing that deer, because I found one little uh, weak point in, in in his system. Um, but he lived there forever. He never left that. Winter, gun season, bow season, early season, summer, he was always in that area. I try to kill him in there, you know? Yeah. Right. That's why they're uh, big and old, 